The new Microsoft Flight Simulator looks absolutely gorgeous out of its digital box. Regions that use the photogrammetry technology literally look photorealistic. Unfortunately, London is not one of these regions. And even more unfortunately for the Queen, this has meant that Buckingham Palace has been turned into Buckingham Council Estate. Worry not though, because for a fee of just £6 and 3p, Orbex have rectified the situation with the London City Landmarks Pack. A pack that includes all the landmarks and, more importantly for the Queen, a proper rendition of Buckingham Palace. You can sip tea, she can sip tea, but is this pack worth the price of a box of tea? Let's find out in this video. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you to click the like button and remain seated until the plane has come to a full stop. So if you're new to flight sims, you might have thought that flight simulators were about simulating flight. Um, they're not. What they're really about is downloading random content from all over the place, shoving it into the game and seeing at what point the game will break. Um, the more you spend and the more broken the game, the better the simulator it is. So it's really nice to see that Microsoft Flight Simulator is accommodating that mentality as well, basically making it a true flight simulator. Now, as I said in the intro, London is not one of the photogrammetry areas. Um, it does look all right. It has satellite imagery. It's got the Millennium Dome. It's got the Shard. It's got the House of Parliament and it's got Tower Bridge and uh, maybe a couple of other things that I've, that I've not noticed. But really, it, it, it doesn't look like London. I mean, look at that. That's supposed to be Canary Wharf. I mean, where's One Canada Square? And am I supposed to know which buildings are the ones related to taking money from your average person's pocket at the expense of society at large? Banks. You know, you can't, you can't, you just can't tell. It's not good enough. So uh, let me, let me just sw swap over here to the Orbex add-on. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that crumbling economy from the air. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, not just Canary Wharf. As you can see, it's got the Millennium Dome still there that was already there. Not just Canada One Square. Not just the HSBC Bank building. But right into the distance, you can see the London skyline. You can see the BT Tower. It looks like London. You can even see the walkie-talkie from here clustered right next to the gherkin and you know as someone that lives near london i spent too, way too much time in london i basically I, I i know i'm gonna die prematurely from the pollution that this city produces so i, I might as well enjoy it you know so uh, I, I know it really well and it just when you play it without this orbex add-on it just doesn't feel right i guess if you were just traveling around and you're not you're not from the uk you've never been here <laughs> oh, you've never flown a plane at this altitude over Canary Wharf, <laughs> you peasant. If you've never been, you know, if you've never been here, you might not notice. And if you're at a high altitude, fine. But if you're, you know, you really like doing the sort of city sightseeing thing, it, it, this totally transforms things. And I think what's really surprising with the Orbex add-on is the sheer number of buildings. It's not like they've just added the major landmarks. They've, they've added loads, loads and loads of buildings that um, really sort of define the street shapes and give the city its real uh, character. Which it's just you just don't you just don't get it if you're flying in a in a Cessna at these kind of altitudes you just don't get it with the out of the box version. Skipping ahead as we approach more societal destruction businesses, you can see we've got the Gherkin. You, I don't know if the Lloyd's building is down there. That's a nice building. I mean, look, I'm giving a lot of stick to banking institutes. They do do some things. They're not completely useless. And let's face it, they do give us gorgeous buildings, so uh, total necessary evil. But as we perform the rotation around this part of London, you'll notice the Shard, which is another building that's included in the base Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also, you'll notice the Tower Bridge and the Tower of London, otherwise known as the castle where they put swords up little boys' bottoms. That did actually happen. I'm not making that up. Now, interestingly, Orbex does replace the 3D models that are already in Microsoft Flight Sim. So, as I say, the Shard, Tower Bridge, and the Sword Bottom building, um, they are now Orbex buildings as opposed to Microsoft buildings. Uh, in case of the Sword Bottom building and Tower Bridge, I think the, or the Orbex versions look arguably better than the, the Microsoft versions. They're more kind of neutral. I think they look great, but the Shard... 
um, I would say is arguably nicer in the original Microsoft Flight Sim because it has a uh, nice shader on it that allows you to actually see into the windows. But having said that, the Orbex shard doesn't stand out as being bad. And, and again, there, there's something a little bit over the top about some of the default Microsoft 3D stuff. In that it's technically better, but because not everything's at that same level, it then stands out as being a little bit over the top, if that makes sense. So I know I just think the, the Orbex stuff just fits in really, really nicely. But you know, you, you get the Microsoft stuff in the base game, whereas you have to pay six pounds for the for the Orbex content. So you know, you, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Now, although it's not particularly sexy, um, a huge part of the Orbex add-on for me are the bridges in London. So one of the, I'd say probably the worst thing with Microsoft Flight Sim from a visual standpoint is some locations, the bridges just aren't there. They're, they're either sunk into the water or they're just not rendered properly. And uh, for me, that's quite immersion breaking when I'm doing low level flights. Uh, London is particularly bad for this. Weirdly, Tokyo's not. Um, I think it might depend on um, uh, uh, certain aspects of the data. And I'm sure Microsoft will improve things over time. Keep in mind that uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is going to be an ever-evolving thing. So also consider that when you're buying DLC updates and things. You, you might buy that, but then it might be made redundant in a future update by Microsoft. But yeah, so the, the Orbex bridges uh, are fantastic. As you say, we just went past the um, suspension bridge that, that connects up to where St. Paul's Cathedral is there. Um, and all the bridges in London are all lined up properly. Um, Westminster Bridge, for example, um, go, which obviously goes to the uh, House of Parliament, uh, the, the, the Millennium Wheel, the rail bridges for Waterloo, the, the rail bridge that goes to Victoria Train Station. I don't know what that bridge is called. You know, it's all that. I mean, look at that. Just flying over Trafalgar Square. Millennium Wheel to the left. And the houses of kill all the old people just to the right there. Um, of course, totally unrealistic because the Elizabeth Tower, which is the tower which has the clock on it, which contains Big Ben, is currently covered in scaffolding in real life and will be for a, a good few more years. So uh, actually throw it in the bin. Ter terrible add-on, not worth the money. <laughs> but yeah, you know, all this stuff is there that uh, allows you to really understand what's going on at Westminster Bridge. Certainly very handy as a way to cross the river and a lot drier than having to walk through the river as it is in default Microsoft Flight Sim. So now, the real question. Is Buckingham Council Estate returned to its former glory? Indeed it is. Look at that. The palace is back intact. Look at all that tax money well spent on something that completely tackles homelessness and the issues endemic to British society. Wow, more edge than a Gillette five blade razor. That's what you get on this channel. So uh, before we finish things off, there's a couple of things I want to mention. Firstly, the night time. And rather nicely, you'll notice that the buildings have their correct lighting on them that they have in real life at night. Um, again, that really makes it stand out from the default Microsoft flight sim content. For example, you see the top of One Canada Square there with its uh, triangle Illuminati <laughs> roof on it. Why did they do that? <laughs> They're just like rubbing it in and conspiracy theorists. And the building there with the blue mesh around it. I don't know the name of that building, but uh, I believe the uh, Docklands light rail goes underneath that building, I think, or by next, next to it. Anyway, so uh, yeah, works at day, works at dusk, works at night. Absolutely fantastic. It just melts into the sim and makes sense and just makes London look absolutely glorious. And almost as important as the actual quality of the content itself is the way you install the content. And I have to say, Orbex have really nailed this. Now, I've been using Orbex with X-Plane 11 for quite a while now, and it's, it, they've gradually improved this side of it. Basically, you buy the content, you, you create an account on the website, you buy the content, you download the Orbex installer, and then it basically manages all your content like, like some kind of Steam interface. And um, once you've bought it, you just click install and it puts it into the game. There's no moving of files or fiddling around. It really is super easy to use. Massively reducing the chance of you breaking and bricking your simulator. Also, when they do content updates, it will update everything as well. So you have to think about it, which is fantastic. I, I mean, I really like the modern aspect of games and flight simulators. Um, and keeping it that way. Microsoft Flight Simulator out the box just has so much in it. I'd have to do all my ortho for XP stuff and all this fiddling around stuff that I did with X-Plane. Out of the box, absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. Um, but if you are going to use extensions and things, the 
convenience you get from something like Orbex is, is fantastic as well and just allows me to be really lazy, which is what I appreciate. So, is it worth a box of tea? Um, yes, I think it is. If you like London, you want to sightsee around London, you live in the UK, absolutely 100% worth it. Though you can't trust anything I say because I got both Orbex for free um, and Microsoft Flight Simulator for free. So literally don't trust anything YouTubers say. But uh, do look at what's, what, what's in this and make your own mind up. Don't be influenced. If you have been influenced, click the like button, subscribe, and we're not doing a special offer on channel memberships where for 4 99 in your currency denomination, you, uh, your comments get displayed at the top and um, I will reply to them just like I reply to every other comment. Uh, but your text will be highlighted in live streams. So that, that's an option. <laughs> right, we're just landing at, uh, we're landing at London City. This is the Orbex London City. You don't get this in that London additional thing. And London Orbex London City, Orbex London City does cost a lot more. And I actually wouldn't recommend getting that unless you're a crazy flight sim person. But the London buildings, 100% six pounds worth it. London City, airports, if you're a mental flight simmer, maybe worth it. But not for the more casual people such as myself. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, happy tea drinking, happy flight simming, and goodbye.